Hello, and welcome to another segment called Lore You Should Know. Uh, that's where me, Greg Tito, speaks to Chris Perkins. Hello. Hey. Uh, about little bits of Dungeons & Dragons lore and how you can use it in your game or just for funsies. Uh, and today we are going to talk, uh, because Dungeon of the Mad Mage is a adventure that's coming out very soon uh, in November 9th in game stores, November 20th everywhere else, Undermountain. And more specifically, the apprentices of Halister Black Cloak, seven of them who yes. went down into the dungeon with him. Are they all still there? Uh, no. 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 Seven of these apprentices. Yes. yes. When they're like the seven dwarves, only spooky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it is October after all. It is. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, there were he had he had seven apprentices. Um, actually, one of them technically wasn't an apprentice when he went in. Um, that would be Mural, the misshapen. He was an intern? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a contractor. Uh, the, um, uh, he was a bodyguard. Oh, okay. He was a fighter Oh, uh, who basically was Halister's numero uno bodyguard. Got it. Uh, and then the others were wizards like Halister. Why was he misshapen? Well, he wasn't when he first went down in the dungeon. He, <laughs> he, 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 was, he was a Mural, a fighter. Accompanying Halister down. And Mural of the pleasing shape yeah. it changed <laughs> dramatically. Yeah. But then, as happens with anybody who spends any amount of time around Halister, is he went insane, um, decided to learn magic under Halister's tutelage, and became a competent wizard, and decided... <laughs> I'm glad we're just jumping in on these guys. Nice. And decided that uh, in order to outdo everybody else on the crazy scale... <laughs> that he would um, turn half of himself into a giant scorpion. Oh, which, which, which half? So he went all scorpion king, and so he's got the upper, he's got the head and upper torso of a man. Okay. And he's got the lower body of a scorpion, okay. complete with legs and stinger. Okay, full, full of rock then. Yes, all right. exactly. Got and it. so, uh, and that's when he started to be known as Mural the Misshapen. And this was not inflicted upon him. He inflicted this upon himself with Halister's blessing and help. Interesting. Yes, and it made him more fearsome, obviously. Right. Um, better able to do his job. Uh, but all this study of magic and whatnot, like so many of the other apprentices, kind of messed with his head and he became so crazy. That Halister said, okay, yeah, I'm going to just leave you down here and good luck with your life, Mural. Bye. Right. Uh, and so Mural kind of carved out a piece of Undermountain for himself and called it Mural's Gauntlet. And that is the 10th level of Undermountain. Oh, I see. And so Mural basically is um, an apprentice who has, mute, has confined himself to one level of Halister's dungeon, named it after himself, and he's very proud. Good for him. He's a proud boy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's still a force to be reckoned with, I'm sure. Yes. He, he, is, uh, he is still this grotesque monstrosity that haunts these. Now, originally, this level of the dungeon, uh, as we mentioned in the earlier podcast, uh, was not crafted by Halister and Mural. Um, they basically just took it over. Uh, the level known as Mural's Gauntlet used to be a drow sanctuary. Oh. And so even though he's stalking the corridors and claiming them as his... All the architecture suggests drow origin. So at least arachnid uh, uh, type stuff. There is, is <laughs> definitely this arachnid connection. Whether yeah. whether It's not clear whether or not Mural was inspired by any of the arachnid stuff that we see. I don't believe that's actually true. I think uh, the, the scorpion motif is something he had settled on even before he just happened to claim this part of the dungeon. More likely what happened is he became a half scorpion, found the part of the dungeon that spoke to his arachnid half, yeah. and moved it in there. And he's like, this is, this is the place yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. All right, so that's one of the that's apprentices. That's one. Yeah. What is, uh, what's another one? Uh, let's do, um, so, Let's talk, let's first cover the apprentices that are present. Okay, um, there are four. Four. Um, in addition to Mural, there is Trobriand, the metal mage. Okay, metal or mental? Metal. Metal mage. Metal. Okay. Yes. Trobriand, one of Halister's most gifted pupils, uh, is like the others crazy. And he decided that he was going to pursue immort immortality through his creations. 
The reason he's called the metal mage is because he's got a gift with making constructs. Right. And that's basically what he has been doing in Undermountain for years and years and years is creating metal constructs. Uh, his greatest creations are called the Skaladar. Mm. And interestingly, they're giant metal scorpions. Oh, inspired so, by his friend? Uh, unclear. <laughs> um, the, uh, but the, the scorpion motif seems to be a thing in Undermountain. And so these giant metal scorpions are constructs that have electrified stingers. Ooh. They're as big as elephants. Ouch. Yeah. They're, and, oh. and they can be controlled, but only if you wear one of Trobrian's uh, metal rings. And he crafted, very Sauron-esque like, crafted a master ring that he wears and oh. then minor rings that others can wear to control Skaladar. But it's the master ring that overrides them all. Okay, so he did that. So he's always yes. going to have that one, but yes. his under apprentices yes. can. And like Mural, he was human, but he is no longer. Um, and this is something we've introduced new into the lore. This is a recent transformation for a Trobriand. Oh, he was human. He has in moved all on. The products. He, uh, yes, yes. Um, but in his newest incarnation, he has transformed himself, and that's all I will say. Interesting. Yes. All right. I want to find that more about Trobriand. Yeah. Okay. I was comfortable talking about Mural's transformation because that's actually old news. If you read old um, Undermountain products, Mural was first introduced, I believe, in the Undermountain, the Deep Levels boxed set, which was the sequel to the original Undermountain box set. Um, Mural first appeared when level 10 was fleshed out for the first time. Un uh, but Trobriand, um, this is really the first time we've gotten to play with him in any real way. And what level is he uh, residing on? Uh, I'd rather not say. Okay. But I will say this. Yes. There is a level of the dungeon called, and it's level 13, and it's known, it's called Trobriand's Graveyard. Oh. Not because he died there, but because that's where all of his old um, experiments went. I see. Yes. So. Very cool. All right. I can't wait for level, level 13. That should level be Level 13. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, so moving on from Trobriand. Yeah. Uh, probably Hallister's mo most promising, I'd say, pupil. Promising meaning most gifted and talented, uh, mo or most, most mo probably most gifted, most m mentally deranged, <laughs> um, and and most likely to succeed him. Right, is Arcturia. She has a level named after her, level fourteen. It's called Arcturia Doom. Uh, for those who don't know, in lore, a doom is equal to a lair. Liches often have dooms right. in the Forgotten Realms. Arcturia Doom um, is where she basically, she cordoned off that section of the dungeon to be her laboratory and workshop. So she's got all these rooms set aside for that. Now there's more going on in Arcturia Doom than simply Arcturia's experiments. Mm. Uh, but she is a very, very strange creature. Uh, she was human. She transformed her. Now, um, many of Halister's apprentices specialized in certain kinds of magic. Her specialty was transmutation magic. And the f what she transformed herself into almost defies description. Uh, first, she became a lich. Mm -hmm. So that solved the whole aging problem. <laughs> solved. Um, solved. Yeah. Uh, so then she magically created like butterfly wings for herself. Mm -hmm. And she turned her skin blue and scaly, almost like a fish. Okay. And she's got these bone spurs all over her arms, like pointy, sharp bone spurs. Hmm. So she's a, she's a bone spur-wielding, butterfly-winged, blue-skinned lich. All right. What, so what, perfectly what, normal. What was the uh, desire for that? Uh, Just she, ornamentation? Or? Basically, reinvention. Um, this idea that there is no transformation, no transmutation that is beyond her or um, beneath her. Interesting. And so she's just sort of like, I can, I can transform myself into anything. Mm. So I like wings and I like bone spurs and blue skin and that's me. And uh, she's, she's very comfortable with who she is. Well, I can and, get behind that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, she has, of all... The apprentices, she and Trobriand have been the ones who have sort of stuck it out with Hallister the longest. 
Meaning that they're loyal to him and his the, desires. Yeah, yeah, that they they're deferential to him. They they sort of know him and are you know they're not they've never felt the need to sort of run off. Okay. And leave him behind. Um, she in particular because she is so distracted by her experiments, which involve transmutations, the turning of one thing into another, or the twisting of something into some entirely new form. And so anything to do with her in Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Uh, is really just the word, probably best word is twisted. Mm. Um, you see a lot of her handiwork in this adventure and none of it is anything like you would expect or have seen before. Oh, creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, yeah, she's, uh, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's, uh, very, 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 uh, dangerous, but at the same time, she's so consumed by her work that if you're a smart adventurer, you might be able to get past her without really incurring her wrath. Unless, of course, you destroy her phylactery, in which case, you know, the bones, oh, the bone spurs come off. And because she's a lich, she's still, uh, uh, she needs her, she needs souls in the phylactery in order to sort of perpetuate her ex undead existence. Got it. Yeah. Um, and does she, so she's one of those ones that also doesn't necessarily have any animosity towards adventurers or anything like that. She Not just particularly. Wants to be left alone I think she's kind of thinking at a higher level. Um, I think everything to her is an experiment. Hmm. So if you pique her interest, maybe that's a bad thing, like because she'd want to experiment on you. I see. Um, what but if you showed any kind of talent with transmutation magic of your own? She does take apprentices. She does? Yes. Oh, well, there um, you go. Trobrand, not so much. She's the, She might be the only one beyond Halaster, actually, who's still kind of recruiting actively apprentices. Although, again, be warned, um, she may not be satisfied with your current form. She, yes, she would want so, to or, yeah. or ornament you as she has been. Yeah. yeah. You, you become an apprentice to a crazy wizard at your own peril. I like the idea of the butterfly wings kind of too, also talking about metamorphosis and that yes, kind of that's, thought. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that's part of the allure is she sort of senses that it's a symb symbolic thing. Yeah. And that's why it reflects her. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. Uh, so who have we covered? Mural, Trobriand, Arcturia. Yes. There's one other who's still loitering around under mountain in Dungeon of the Mad Mage, and we haven't really seen him before, and that's Nestor. Nestor. N-E-S-T-E-R, yeah. I feel like that's a familiar name. It, it has a familiar sound to it, yeah. for sure. And uh, it might be easily confused with Nistel. Okay. Uh, who is, you know, Nistel's magic aura and. Oh, okay. Other, yeah, maybe other that, maybe that's names. what I'm thinking from a spell name. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, Nestor. <laughs> so, let me just check one thing here. Sure. You can, you can move the microphone. Too. Oh, it's all right. Um, necromancy is kind of his thing. He, too. Um, aimed to become a lich. But, and this is covered in an earlier Undermountain product, we just sort of picked up the idea and ran with it. Mm. Um, he, rather than follow the traditional rituals for lichdom, decided he could come up with his own. It didn't work. Oh. Um, it, it half worked. He was able to become an undead creature, but not a lich in power. And his body has, is in this sort of state of perpetual entropy and decay. Ooh. To the point where all that's left of him now is a skull and two floating arms. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, so he's on his way out. <laughs> <laughs> he basically maybe is like, one day he'll become a demi lich. You all have done liches wrong. Yeah, I'm gonna do it my way. Exactly. I'm I'm the I'm the master of necromancy here. I got this. This is easy. I'm gonna come up with a whole new creature. <laughs> no, no, it whiffed. It whiffed. Oh, uh, and permanent damage. And so. He haunts Under Mountain in this decayed, floating, undead form. Uh -huh. and, and because of this decay, his mind has also decayed. And so he is really just now an undead shell of what he used to be. Oh. Does he have any uh, desires? Like, is he, is he trying to get back to his form? So currently, he is... <laughs> This is going to sound so stupid, but <laughs> he's teaching to make ends meet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He is yeah. Um, uh, something I, you're familiar with. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't want to give too much away, but he, he's, he's doing some tutoring work in Undermountain. OK. And, uh, so you can run into him in his decayed state and have words. But he's out of touch. He's he's clearly lost most of his marbles. There might be only one or two rattling around in that skull of his at this point. Right. Because of this, the effects of the because spell. of the decay, yeah. yeah, yeah. So he is a he is an object lesson in uh, 
hubris. Yes, delving too far. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, and then the other uh, four apprentices. Uh, so since you said the uh, what's there, his name, I, I'll one? gloss over. Um, there's Rantantar. Rantantar. Rantantar, uh, who we don't know a great deal about, um, but you and you don't encounter him in this adventure. Um, he has taken leave or died or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but you do find one of his items uh, in this adventure in kind of a very unusual way. Okay. Um, so uh, he he is represented by this. Thing that you can find. Cool. Um, then there's another one. Um, her name is Marambra Nightsteel. She's still the knight? Yeah. She, uh, of the school of, she was an evoker. And oh, do, do they all map to different schools? Uh, some, there's some overlap, but uh, yeah, they, they've each got their specialty, their specialization school. Makes sense. Uh, and uh, we don't, of all of Halaster's apprentices, we know the least about Marambra. Um, she literally is just mentioned by name in a variety of sources, and mm. we know almost nothing about her. We, because we have pictures of her in this, uh, like in the dungeon, she's described, but really she is a, she's kind of a mystery, and we were comfortable leaving her that way in case a DM wants to do something with her. Okay. So because cool. she's because she's basically a blank slate and we're not putting any like uh, hammer down on who she is and where she's at. If a DM wants to take Marambra Night Steel and run with her, the DM can. That's neat. I like how and then if she's an evoker, you know, uh, in, for some reason immediately what called to mind was like a war mage or some kind of, you know, of right. fireball yes, specialist very much that so. would be used yes, in, in absolutely. The, that type of yep. uh, warfare and so if Exactly. You, yeah. yeah, but she um, his, historically, uh, it's believed that she left Under Mountain at some point. But there's always the possibility she could come back. Right. Um, Potions, longevity are a thing. Who knows? Yeah. Right. Okay, that's uh, cool. Yeah. So she's she's blank slate. Uh, play, do with her what you will. The last one of the seven apprentices is, in some ways, um, going to be the most important from the player character's point of view, and that is Jasira Kesselharp. Kesselharp. Uh, Kestel Harp is she her story is a bit of a tragedy um, insofar as she realized Hallister was crazy and tried to escape from him Mm. and he tracked her down and dragged her practically back to Under Mountain and had to confine her in the Citadel of the Bloody Hand which is a a dungeon complex under Mountain Waterdeep connected to Under Mountain but not really part of the dungeon itself Understood. And so she, he magically bound her to the dungeon. But she was no, you know, she's no waif. Uh, she's, she was a powerful wizard at the time this happened. But he's got something in his head about her that he can't have her wandering around. Awful. Um, it is awful. But she outsmarted him. Um, she became, she, in her captivity, was able to transform herself into, no kidding, a living wish. Uh, like a like a wish spell, like a wish spell, personified. Okay, and uh, once she had learned that secret, unlocked that knowledge, she wished herself into the fabric of Undermountain itself. Oh, so as to make Hallister think she had escaped when in fact she's still there. All right, and she's trying to find a way to separate him basically cut the cord between him and under mountain so he can be killed for good. Wow. That sounds like a pretty good, uh, 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 ending to a movie. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So now the characters who go into the dungeon probably won't know any of this and that's fine. And it's, it's, it, she exists in dungeon of the mad mage to serve a variety of functions and there are various ways that she can manifest and without going into too many details, but that means she's still alive. And right. it also means that maybe there is a way to separate Hallister from the dungeon and kill him for good. Yeah. And maybe she, she, she'll take over as the, uh, yeah. as the overseer. <laughs> so, but it does drive Hallister batty that he has never been able to figure out how she escaped. Ah, cause he had, he had confined her to this That's area. Right. And so, yeah. Using all, all of his best magics. Oh, but and, he's so and now she's gone. And now it's like, hmm, oh, Yep, she's actually yeah. still there all along. Interesting. Yeah. All right, so. That sounds like a lot to delve into. And I love 
the idea of um, the dungeon master who's running Dungeon of the Mad Mage being able to tell. <laughs> 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 I just knocked over my water bottle and it splooshed, but luckily it did not go anywhere near anything electronic right, yes, or yes. Uh, Chris good, Perkins. Good so job. that was good. Good right. job. Right. I, I aimed uh, yeah. well. Um, but that a dungeon master could do that on, uh, you know, imprint whatever story they wanted to tell based on, yeah. you know, even though this the, the dungeons are more fleshed out than ever has been in the past, I love that there's time for improvisation, even just mentioning the apprentice. Absolutely, did. yeah. I mean, we want to, it's a combination of we wanted to use what had faithfully reappeared before, but at the same time, just have discussions around the office about what could we do with the ones who haven't had much attention, yeah, like Jasira, um, and actually make them, you know, fun. Or in the case of Marambra, can we just leave them out there for other DMs to play with? Would you ever like? Is there is there like a canonical like he only had seven apprentices, or do you think they? He has be actually more? had more apprentices since. Okay. So the seven were the original seven who came with him, descended into Under Mountain, yeah. and and they were his most powerful. But in the years since, many of them left or died or have become absorbed in their own work. Hallister has taken on other apprentices, and you do get to meet some of these individuals in various states uh, as you make your descent into Undermountain. Okay, cool. Um, and I like the idea of there being, you know, others that... And he's always looking for more. Yeah. Crazy dude that he is. Uh, I'm not giving away too much, I don't think, by saying that he's just opened an academy in the darkest reaches of his dungeon. Uh-oh. So looking for, looking for new pupils, I guess, is oh, what man. he's up to. All that, of, that doesn't bode well. That does not bode well. No. Uh, and uh, yeah, but hey, maybe you're a character who wants to study under the tutelage of the Mad Mage. Who, who better to learn from? Right. Yeah, yeah. Just, just you know, talk to Nestor first. Is all, <laughs> I, is all I'm saying. <laughs> he's, he's a warning sign out there for all you want to be liches. For all you want to be liches and Halister acolytes. Yeah, yeah, there's danger to be had. There, there is. Maybe even all of them actually. They don't sound like they're 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 terribly they're, happy. No, they're all mental. In yeah, their, in their strange way. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Chris Perkins. Uh, if people want to get in touch with you, how can they do so? I am on Chris. I am at Chris Perkins DND on Twitter. Excellent. I'm at Greg Tito, and uh, thanks. We'll be back with some more fun lore you should know uh, coming up soon. All righty. Sweet. I think that was a lot of uh, stuff for yeah, that uh, people dense. didn't know about. Yeah, so yeah. that's, that's, that's going to be really exciting. Uh, all right. Well, thank you. And yep. uh, thank you, everyone in chat. Uh, you've been wonderful. Uh, I stopped checking after a while, but uh, fantastic stuff. And I hope you got everything you wanted by listening to this live recording, including a deluge of water. <laughs> <laughs> it's already dried up. It's fine. I know. It's so, yeah, it blends in. It's black. Yeah. Uh, all right. Thanks, everybody. We'll be back. Uh, there's tons of more streaming happening, including episode 112. 112 of Dice Camera Action. That is tomorrow, Tuesday at 4 p.m. with guest star Hadil Almasari. Yes. Playing Dr. Serenity Theximoff, Psychic Exorcist. Oh, my gosh. That's going to be so fun. It's going to be good. If you liked season three's Tortle Recall, this episode's for you. Nice. I can't wait. Uh, I love Hadil. She does great work. Uh, and, uh, yeah, can't wait to see where her psychic leads the story. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Uh, we'll be back. Uh, we got lots of stuff going on tonight, uh, uh, but then we'll be back here broadcasting starting at 1 p.m. Pacific time, I believe, tomorrow with Mike Merle's Happy Fun Hour. Uh, <laughs> see you then. Bye. Bye.